Welcome back to Houston Newsmakers. We are continuing our conversation with Rabbi Brian Strauss, the senior rabbi of the Congregation Beth Yeshua. And I want to take you back to a scene that happened uh, last year in Charlottesville, Virginia. Sure. The, uh, after thousands of torch-bearing uh, people marched and they chanted, uh, uh, white lives matter and Jews will not replace us, it was soon replaced by this scene, thousands more bearing candles of peace. Both scenes were striking for what they represented. Uh, the latter representing some of the things that we really uh, appreciate uh, about America. The former was an example of um, those who just, they just anti-Semitism right. at its height. So it was back and forth, back in front of us. And I think right. a lot of us, uh, Kelly Zuniga from the Holocaust Museum said, here you are going along thinking that things are getting better, and then that kind of rose up. What do you say to a congregation when things like that happen, and you know that that's front of mind for them when they see those? Yeah. Now, I remind them of the goodness of America, mm -hmm. that an overwhelming majority of Americans are welcoming to not only us as Jews, but to all minorities. I also remind people as well is that to continue to reach out to other communities, uh, part of being Jewish, and what I'm gonna speak about this Friday night to my congregation, is to be even more Jewish in response to what happened. And one way to be even more Jewish is to do more for our community, to do even more to help those in need, whether they're Jews or non-Jews, to build even more bridges with different communities here in Houston. And to remember that an overwhelming majority of Americans would disagree with those people that marched through the campus of Virginia, at Virginia University, and said Jews will not replace us. That, that's the minority, the extreme minority, the, the extreme, and we have to make sure they continue to be the extreme. Mm -hmm. I still believe in the goodness of an overwhelming majority of people in this country who would reject and unlike some leaders who said they're good people on both sides there weren't good people on both sides mm -hmm. it was clear to all of us almost all of us who was right and who wasn't right let's talk about going forward um, as far as safety is concerned your congregation and other congregations around the country have to now have that front of mind someone I saw was talking about it seems like you know that our that we normally we want to think of our doors are all, always open, but you have to. There's a reality about the safety that you have to have. Right. No, we we feel very good about our security situation. Really, after 9/11, we took a lot of steps to make sure that we feel very secure in our congregation and all congregations in the city. Take a lot of steps. Take security very seriously. But you know what we've taught um, our guards and our policemen that are at our synagogue is to welcome everyone if they feel safe and they feel it's an appropriate person who's coming to say Shabbat Shalom to them. It's the greeting we give when they come in, or mm -hmm. when it's the Jewish New Year, to say Shana Tava, Happy New Year, to make them as comfortable as possible. But what we find is our congregants and our guests want to see the security. They appreciate it, right. they expect it, but they still feel welcome. And so I think we found a nice mix at our congregation. We feel very safe. You have, your, your family history is one that you are very familiar with yes. anti-Semitism and for those who may not know, y y your family lineage Correct. goes through concentration camps, yes. is it not? Yes, and unfortunately my grandmother, my mother's mother, grew up in a small village outside of Krakow, Poland, and her almost entire village was wiped out. She lost 23 relatives, including her parents, her brother, during the Holocaust. She was the only survivor. She survived two concentration camps through many death marches. She miraculously survived. And here's the amazing story about it. She had two uncles who left Poland in the 1920s, before the Holocaust, who made their way to Oklahoma. So when she was in a rehabilitation camp in Switzerland after the war, she sent a letter to Oklahoma saying, ring Oklahoma, USA. That's all she knew. She didn't know where they lived, but the mailman somehow, the post office somehow got it to her uncle, last name Ring, and they brought her to Oklahoma. And here's the amazing thing. She grew up, raised my mother and brother, her, my mother and my uncle and aunt in a small town in Oklahoma. And they're all very proud Jews, prominent members of their communities today, and was able to still, despite what she went through, teach them to love their Judaism. What a great story, and what a great story about immigration. Yes. And how it makes a positive difference in oh. this country as Immig opposed to immigrants. Whether, no matter who they are, have always made our country better. That's the greatness of this country, and it's something that we need to remind all people. Immigrants don't make us worse, they make us stronger. How optimistic are you going forward, and how will you provide that to your congregation about where we are as a community, as a society, as it relates to getting anti-Semitism out of our culture? Look, there's always going to be anti-Semites. There's always going to be those who like to blame others for their problems. Instead of taking responsibility for the challenges in their life, it's easier to blame uh, the other. 
whether, whether they're Jews, African Americans, Mexican Americans, immigrants, there's always going to be. We can't rid the world of anti-Semitism. But what we can do is be proud of our Judaism, continue to know that we as Jews bring a lot of goodness to this world. We're far from perfect, just like none of us are perfect. But we have to take pride in our tradition, pride in what we've given to the world, and continue to do what we can to make the world a better place. Ultimately, you know what Judaism is about? Judaism, in a nutshell, is about being partners with God in making the world a better place. Mm -hmm. And whether through it's what we call mitzvot, deeds of loving kindness, the commandments that we follow, it's bringing the ethics and morals, the values of our, our long tradition, the oldest living religious tradition in the world today. It's bringing those values into the marketplace, into the world. And we have to continue to do that no matter who likes us or doesn't like us. Rabbi Strauss, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for the lessons you're teaching to your congregation and, by extension, the community at large. We My pleasure. Thank you for all you're doing as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you.